Hello and welcome to Tim's BMW Repairs and Information. Well, this episode's all about timing chain guides. Yeah, this is an M62 engine in my E31. And uh, the big news about M62, well, for the last couple of years anyway, has been timing chain guides and the fact that they're failing. And of course, when they do fail, then the timing chain isn't properly tensioned anymore and it thrashes around, makes an awful racket. And if you rev up the engine too far, then the timing chain actually comes out the top of the valve cover. And that's not a good thing to happen. And of course, then you lose all the timing between the crankshaft and the camshaft. And the pistons will start whacking all the valves and bending them. And sure, the engine can be repaired, but these days, especially with an E38, really worth very little money. Um, the engines are generally either replaced or the whole car is scrapped. Now, the funny thing is, of course, is that in 2020, there's a lot of M62s failing and they're failing quite early as well. As far as mileage is concerned, we're having ones which are failing 60, 70,000 miles and that's not great. But then you have engines like this one, which is over 170,000 miles on the original guides and that's doing fine. So there's got to be a difference between some engines and others. And there is a big difference as well. And there's really two things which affect the timing chain guides. And if those two things are looked after properly, then the engine's going to last a lot longer. But first of all, let's have a look at the timing chain itself and what's actually going on. I'll draw it out later. But we have a timing chain. We've got an engine that uh, turns clockwise. And we have a timing chain that comes up from the bottom sprocket to one side of the camshaft, back round a plastic guide rail over the other camshaft and back down to the idler sprocket. And on this part here, there's a tensioned guide rail, plastic again, that's being pushed hard to keep the timing chain guide in tension uh, to stop it flopping about. And uh, the actual device is the timing chain tensioner and uh, it's fitted to the engine just down here and in a minute we'll go through exactly how to change that because that is one of the big keys to this problem. The first one is oil and it's very important to change oil regularly on the M62 and the M62 tub um, and if you don't do that then you'll start getting particulates running through the engine. You can always tell when you <laughs> pop off the oil filler cap and you have a look down there and it's all sort of brown and varnished whereas it should be a lovely golden colour and lovely and clean yeah if it's sort of looking brown and varnished then your timing chains are very likely to fail and the reason for that is that the timing chain tensioner has oil waves which are very small that run to it and it has a pressure relief valve in it as well now if those oil waves get blocked then you don't get any pressure on the timing chain guides and then, of course, the chain's going to slap around. It'll smash to bits all the bits of plastic on the guide rails and then rev it fast enough and blah, blah, blah. Same thing happens. So those are the two main considerations for trying to get your engine to last more than 70 or 80,000 miles. Change the oil regularly and use a semi-synth or a fully synthetic oil, uh, ones with plastic softeners built into them, because modern oils these days additives that actually help maintain plastics and rubbers as well as well as well as having its lubricating properties and it's the same with coolant as well we've been through this before but yes a, a modern semi or fully synthetic oil is going to look after plastics a lot better but much more important than that if you change it every 10,000 miles or every year at the very most then you're not going to go build up any particulates of course the filter's got to be changed at the same time now, once you start getting build-up of varnish, it affects two things. It affects the timing chain tensioner and, of course, the Vanos units. And uh, then you'll start losing timing on the cams as well. And talking of timing, it brings us, brings us on to the reason why do you always get uh, camshaft A over-advanced as a good warning to timing chain guides failing? Well, it's not a, uh, an advanced warning of timing chain guides failing. It's an advanced warning that your tensioner isn't working. And I'll draw it out a little later on the whiteboard and show exactly why you get that error code. But that's a great sign. Timing chain uh, camshaft A over advance 
change your tensioner, change your oil immediately. And also we need to change the tensioner in such a way that it builds up pressure before the en engine actually starts. And we go through exactly how to do that as well. An in interesting point is, of course, the M60 has plastic timing chain guides, as does the V12 M70, and no one ever mentions them. And the reason for that is, of course, they have an idler sprocket uh, that's in the V of the engine um, that takes up instead of the plastic guide rails. Now, the plastic guide rails on the M60 and M70 do fail but you don't get this uh, major error where the timing chain starts flying off the sprockets uh, because there's not quite so much room for it to get out. It only, you only lose a bit of tension on the timing chain. But what it does do, of course, is it over advance that bank and then you can have engine running problems, which are very difficult to find um, until you take the sump off and you find bits of timing chain guide in there. So. Having an M60 or M70 is not an insurance policy against timing chain guide failure because they both have plastic timing, chaining, timing chain guides and they both can fail as well. It's just you never hear about it uh, because people just imagine there's some other problem with the engine rather than being over advanced. And it wasn't until the introduction of, of course, the camshaft sensor um, being an accurate measure of the timing that we actually got to this position where we knew that camshaft A was over advanced. And of course it's often misdiagnosed as Vanos problems on the M62 TUB44 um, because that seems to be the warning sign. But generally what's happening there as well is that you've got two problems occurring caused by one which is the inadequate oil changes. It's the fact the oil waves are blocked up and then you get this problem with the Vanos units where the helical gears get stuck together because of the particulates in the oil. So that's why it's so important to change the oil and change the oil with a good quality oil, semi or fully synthetic. And it's also the reason where this doesn't happen that we get so many problems with the M62s. I'm afraid it really is the death knell to them if you don't change your oil. And the problem is, is of course, the, it builds up so much shellac everywhere and varnish. The PCV system, the, the crankcase, crankcase ventilation system, will stop working if you don't do your oil changes. And that's because the drain from the oil separator valve, which is just under this cover up here, its drain gets blocked up and then the oil can't escape and it shoots up to the pressure control valve at the back and that gets burnt in the manifold. So yes, oil changes. And the problem is, is of course the E38s these days having such a small value, um, by the time you buy a new one, it generally hasn't been looked after and it hasn't had the oil changes. And that is always a recipe for disaster. So you buy what looks like a lovely E38 740, looks like it's been brilliantly maintained but they haven't done the oil changes. And I'm afraid a couple of hundred uh, miles down the road, it's quite possible the timing chain guides are gonna fail. And then you've got a big lump of scrap metal, I'm afraid. So yes, oil changes, that's always number one with these engines. It's the same on the M60 as well. Long oil changes kill engines, and it's particularly important for these with a the very small oil, oil waste to the timing ta chain tensioner. Right, so what we'll do next is we're going to whip out the timing chain tensioner and we'll have a look at it and I'll explain how it works because it isn't just a spring that pushes out a piston, it's hydraulic. It actually has hydraulic pressure applied to it um, to provide enough tension on the timing chains uh, because it's a huge amount of energy that's been put on them and people don't realise, you know, it's just thinking it's put, just taking up slack. Well, it's not. It's putting a huge amount of energy onto the chain to stop it flying off the sprockets and uh, stop it flying off the bottom guide rail as well, because that, that's the one it flies off and the top sprocket as well will fly off. So you're not just stopping the timing chain guides from being damaged. You're actually setting the timing with the timing chain tensioner. It has to push very hard and keep that timing chain perfectly tensioned or the timing of both banks will be out 
uh, because you start getting slack in the chain. Anyway, that's our next plan. We'll take the time, I'll go through exactly how you change the timing ch chain tensioner. Difficult to say that word sometimes. And to do it properly so that we don't actually run the engine when we put it back in. It's very important we build up hydraulic pressure in it before we actually fire the engine up because it's that point that you start thrashing the cha chain guides to bits. Um, yeah, no tension on the guide, timing is off, and you thrash the plastic to bits. And that's what causes timing chain guide failure. It isn't the length of time it's been in the engine or the number of miles it's done in it. It's how often you change the oil and how often you change the timing chain tensioner. Right, let's get to it. And also we'll have a look at how it all works. Right, well, this is uh, M62 TUB. And you can tell that because it's got the Vanos unit strapped to the inlet manifolds. And of course, the timing between the sprocket and the camshaft isn't fixed. The Vanos units can change the timing, the relationship between the sprocket and the camshaft by moving the helix gears in and out. But we don't have to worry about ourselves about that. Let's have a look at the chain guides and the way the chain goes round. Right, so we've got the crankshaft here and it's got two sprockets, one for the timing chain, the other one for the oil pump, which is down in the sump. And of course, with the M60, we would have got an idler sprocket here to take the timing chain rather than this U-shaped guide. Anyway, we've got a crankshaft which turns clockwise when viewed from the front of the engine. And you can see the path of the chain as it goes round here and back to the sprocket again. But first thing seen is this guide rail, the lower guide rail, uh, plastic faced, and we go up to inlet camshaft on bank B. So this is called bank B, that's bank A. Goes round the inlet sprocket for bank B and then round the notorious um, a timing chain guide here. Big casting of aluminium with a plastic face. And we all know it's the plastic faces that fall off and end up in the sump. So we go around this guide and round the inlet sprocket for bank A. And then here's the timing chain tensioner, pushes against this guide rail and puts a lot of tension in that direction. So it's hydraulically powered. So the piston pops out of the end with a lot of force to push this onto this guide rail. And it provides a lot of force. And so we don't get any slack at all in the timing chain. Okay, so we know that it is this U-shaped guide which generally fails first. But before that happens, you usually get an error code, which is camshaft bank A over advanced. Now, if we think that this guide rail hill here has lost its face, then this chain's going to assume a slightly shorter path. And in which case, this sprocket is going to be retarded in respect to bank B. And so you would get a retarded message error code rather than an advanced one. So what is happening here is, is that error code, camshaft A, over advanced, is generally a failure of the timing chain tensioner rather than the guides. And it's a good warning to change the tensioner and the oil and to flush it as much as possible. Because what exactly is happening is we don't get any tension on this rail, so it's slightly slack along here. And this chain wants to assume a straight line. <laughs> so we're going clockwise. So this is whizzing off in this direction. And the first thing it wants to do is go straight on at the sprocket. But as long as we're not revving the engine too fast, it'll go round the sprocket without any problems. Uh, but it's when we get to the U-shaped guide when things go a bit, well, go a bit wrong. And what's actually happening here is that, again, the chain wants to assume a straight path. Its centrifugal forces at this point want it to go straight on, but it's pulled back up by the chain turning clockwise here and this pulling it back up. So what we're getting here is the chain goes along and then it goes away from the timing chain guide goes downwards a bit and then it goes back up and the chain is now assuming a much longer path. So the distance from this sprocket to this one is now longer and so the timing on this bank is now advanced in respect to this. 
because the chain is longer between there and there. That means this has to be more clockwise and more clock clockwise means more advanced. So that error code, often thought to be timing chain guide failure, isn't uh, because what it actually is, is as I've explained, the timing chain is assuming a longer path. Now, of course, when we get to this point where it can assume a longer path, a tick over, there's lots of forces acting on cams. As the valve springs push up and onto the lifters and onto the cam, it can force the cam forwards or backwards. And if you ever try to turn a camshaft over <laughs> with the valves still in place, there's quite a lot of effort involved in turning a camshaft and it'll keep jumping over the apex of the cams. <laughs> Give you a good old crick in the neck after a while trying to turn a camshaft over. So at tick over when things are turning over reasonably slowly, there's forces acting in this direction and in that direction. And what that is causing is the chain to slap up and down. And as soon as it starts to do that, then it thrashes the face of this guide rail to bits. But as I say, you get the warning beforehand, something's going wrong, camshaft A over advance, do something about it before you thrash all the plastic off of these. So if you think about it, with the chain perfectly in tension, there's only frictional forces on these guides. There's forces in that direction. And as long as your oil's good, we generally don't see a worn out timing chain guide we tend to see ones which have been smashed to bits. Now, with the chain directly flat against these guides, they're under tension all the time, they don't get thrashed, and they can last a, a, a really long time, a couple of hundred thousand miles, even more. Um, and it's only when you start losing tension and you get this thrashing that then it smacks this one to bits. It really knocks all the bits of plastic off of that. Whereas, if it was held in tension all the time, they last absolutely hundreds of thousands of miles. So it really is down to the timing, ten ten timing chain tensioner at this point. When you get that error message, it's a warning to change the tensioner, change the oil, flush it if possible, because the oil ways might be blocked. And uh, just cross your fingers that that is enough to uh, get it all going again. And it often is. If the timing chain tensioner is replaced regularly, you generally don't have any problems with the timing chain guides because the chain fits snugly along all of them. And the only forces you have to consider are frictional forces. And with a good modern semi-synth or fully synthetic oil, they have detergents, uh, cleaners, plasticizers, get all sorts of stuff in oils these days and they preserve the timing chain guide rails plastic faces. So unless you thrash them uh, by losing tension, then they all last a long time. Right, let's have a quick look at what we need to get off. Well, first of all, we get off the air filter cover, number of clips all the way around it, just twang them off with a screwdriver, math connector off, undo the Jubilee clip. This whole lot comes out of the way, gives us a bit more space. Then the water bottles, single plastic screw, so just need a screwdriver on that, undo that. Then lift this up slightly and then pull on the metal uh, heat shield and the whole thing will come out and you can get it over and down on top of the air filter cover but be careful you don't scratch the headlight cover after that there's the horrible rusty looking thing which is down here that rusty thing down there that's the charcoal canister and it's got a special clamp on it that's a real pain in the neck but we'll get onto that in a minute there's the other end of it. It's got a little pipe that comes out of it. It's focusing on that. And that just goes into some clips underneath. I'm not sure if we can see them. There we go. Just goes into those clips one end. And that's a rubber connector at the other end. 
So we just pull the pipe out of there and pull it out of the clips, that's out of the way. And that's the front of the charcoal canister we can just see there. And uh, it's, yeah, it's got a clamp that goes over the top of it in this sort of fashion um, with a bolt at the end and where my finger is. And then it has a half clamp underneath and when you've undone the top half, the bottom half tends to drop off and go onto the manifold. But if you're ready for it, you'll be okay. So, yep. Yeah. And then after we've done that, let's have a look where the timing chain tensioner is. Well, if you can see that pipe there, focusing on that. That's the top of the compressor. And just to the right of that pipe is uh, where the tensioner is and it faces upwards about 45 degrees so really it's just a case of finding the right tools to get in there now uh, my box spanner and the tommy bar that worked really well but you can do it with proper tools and really it's just a case of going through your socket set and finding ones which are going to work it's a tree in there now and for me what worked was that one, extension, universal joint, and a shallow 19mm socket. I did try a deep 19. It gets a bit close to the engine subframe, and engine chassis member, I mean. And uh, you can put a universal joint on it, but then of course I need the big wrenches and stuff like that, and it's just a bit too awkward. Now what worked best, that, that, that universal joint and a shallow socket. It's one of those jobs when you end up going all the way through your toolbox trying to find tools that are going to fit. This one for instance on the canister, charcoal canister, it's got a bolt that goes down there and it's just pig awkward to get to so tried all sorts of combinations of stuff and this one just about gets on there so I've loosened it and now I could probably go to a screwdriver type because that was the problem we couldn't get the wrench in there and it's just a bit too tight so I swap that over Alrighty ho, so this is what I've got now, got one of them, that can go behind there, just about get on that bolt, and so let's give that a squirt down there, that's better, that'll make things a bit easier. Oh, I'll see what that feels like now, just drive further up, yeah that's made life a lot easier. Well, it's made it easier, don't say, I'm not going to say it was a lot easier, because it wasn't. You see, it's just not quite the right angle, that's the trouble. Right, so I'm get the top half of the clamp off. There we go, there's the clamp. Put that down somewhere. On top of the screwdriver case. Now, the bottom half, that, as soon as you move the canister, it wants to drop out, so get hold of him, get him out before you lose him. On there. Then the canister's got a little rubber tube that you need to work off. Probably need two hands for this. So there's the tube, there's the canister. Canister's all loose and floppy now. Right, so there we go. Canister's missing its bit of rubber. There we go, that's it. There we go. Right, the canister now can be tied out of the way. Then get him out from underneath there. We'll tie him up just there. It's a rusty, rotten looking thing, isn't it? Righty ho. I've got the socket on the tensioner. And you can see what sort of space you've got around. You've got the, uh, the compressor, the pipework from the compressor one side. 
and something else the other side. Put the light on, I think. Right, gone for a slight change here. I've gone for a shallow 19mm socket, followed by a universal joint, and that seems to be a lot better. Zoom out a bit, there we go. So there's a focusing on that. There we go, and we can get just probably a couple of clicks go at a time. So there we go, that's a much better plan. So that's a shallow socket, universal joint, and then a wrench. And I could have a small extension on that, I suppose. That'd get me away from that, and we'll probably have to go remove the extension again when this starts coming out. But now I'll pull that off and see what I've got down there. Bottom of the air filter housing, to remove that, we have to remove the headlight bucket because it's got the joint down in there. Can't even get my hands in there, but that's where it joins. So yeah, that's not coming off, even though I've removed all the bolts and stuff. So this fella's got to go down and he goes into a clip down there. There's the clip right down there. So you've got to get him in there. So there we go. That's the pipe to the canister. There's the canister. I'll just push that in. Part of the clamp in. Sure to drop that. Usually do. So it goes that way up underneath the canister. So I've got to get, get in there, get it underneath. Doing it the right way, yeah. Right, so lift the canister up slightly, clamp underneath and into position. That's just going to drop out, so I'm going to need two hands for that. Lift it up slightly and uh, find it a bit easier to get it back in. Doing that, a lot easier than undoing it. There we go. Looking lovely, yeah, that's fine. Need two hands to do it. So, to get that clamp back on, to hook it in this end, uh, got to hold on to it. I'll get around the other side, fit the bottom half of the clamp in, and just sort of squish it together and do the thing up by hand. So, you've got a few threads on, and then use the, uh, the wrench to do the rest of it. And it all sits down like that. Oh, looks a bit horrible and worn out down there, to be honest. Well, there we go then. That's about it for timing chain guides. Um, yeah, as I have to reiterate it, so I have to do that hundreds of times. Oil changes, very important. Don't go too long without oil changes because it just gets the whole system gummed up and then all sorts of things go, goes wrong. Timing chain guides will fail. You start burning oil. You have all sorts of problems. Your Vanos will stop turning as well. And uh, yeah, that's about it. So anyway, thanks very much for watching and I'll see you next time.